Hey, Primary 6 Math Prodigy, this is Coach Saiful with your daily dose of math mastery. And today we're going to go into question number one of your assessment paper number nine. Now, these questions are all on algebra. I have nine of them. And uh, I'll try to see whether I can group them into groups so that I can only have five videos for this uh, this week. All right. So I'm going to start one with the first question. The first question is consists of five parts and they're all very, very simple. Okay, so let's take a look at them immediately. All right, let's take a look right now. So it says here, if x is equal to 72, find the value of 1 quarter x. Okay, if x is equal to 72, find the value of 1 quarter x. Very simple. Let me just show you how to do this. If x is equal to 72, in other words, this little symbol here called x is equal to 72, what is 1 quarter of x? So you simply replace the x with a 72. So what you get is actually 1 quarter times 72. So as you may know, anything that, uh, in the, if let's say it's like this, where there is no sign in between a number and a variable, a variable being a letter, um, you simply just times them together, multiply them together. So 1 quarter times 72 will give you, okay, let's take out my calculator over here. Wow, this is an interesting calculator. 1 quarter is 1 divided by 4, okay, gives you 1 quarter 0 0.25 times 72 gives you the answer of 18. So that's the answer for part A. Okay, now for part B, let's take a look at the question. It says, Mary bought one dozen eggs for $6D. The price of one egg is, very simple, a dozen is equal to 12 eggs. Okay, 12 eggs. And the question then tells you, uh, Mary bought one of this, or one dozen of this, for 6D eggs, 6D dollars. This is equals to 6D dollars. So the question is asking you find the price of 1. Okay, 1 egg. Very simple, 12 units is equals to 6D dollars. So 1 unit is equals to 6D divided by 12. So this, how do we do this? First of all, we keep the sign and then we take 6, which is the number, divided by the num other number, which is 12. 6 divided by 12 gives you 0 0.5. And then D divided by, what's this, what's this thing over here? There's nothing over here. So D divided by 1 equals you D. So the answer is 0 0.5 D. Very, very simple. Move on to part C. 3 and 1 quarter W plus 5 over 6 W. Now, don't get confused. Don't get scared. All we have to do is understand that it's a very simple process okay w is like almost like saying as i told you in the class it's like webbit <laughs> it's like webbit uh it's like a three and one quarter webbits plus five six rabbits equals to what so it's basically the same unit so you can add them together if since they are the, on the same variable they are of the same uh, letter we can add them together so it's almost like adding um, fractions even it's almost like without having the W over there so 4 and 6 make them the common uh, common factor will be what the common denominator sorry will be 12 so times 3 here so you will get times 3 plus times 2 over here because we want to get 12 10 over 12 okay so we get 3 over 3 3 and 3 over 12 W plus 10 over 12 W is equals to 3, 13 over 12w. Now we have an improper fraction, which means that the top number is bigger than the lower number. So 12 parts will make you 1. So 3 plus 1 gives you 4. And you have 1 left, 4 and 1, 12w. And that is the answer. Very chicken, very chicken. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Part D. Part D says 5p times 3q times 2r. 5p times 3q times 2r. Now how do we multiply these things? Very simple again. Always take a look at the numbers separately and then take a look at the letters or some, we call it the variables separately. So P, Q, R and 5, 3 and uh, what's the number? 5, 3 and 2. So 5 times 3, 5 this number times this number gives you 15. 15 times 2 gives you 30. Then the next part, P times Q times R. Now how do we get that? P times Q times R is basically saying P, Q, R. Because like if you remember, I told you just now, anything where it has no, it has nothing in the in between, it means times. So thirty pqr means thirty times p times q times r. Very very simple. 
Okay, let's move on to part E, the final part of this question. Find the value of j if rj squared minus 1, 2, 8 equals to minus 20. So this is a little bit challenging uh, for some of you. But if you know the basics of algebra, you will know how to do this. Okay, oops. Okay, first off, the very important thing is we must understand what the game is. Okay? The game is basically when you have something like this, when you have an equal sign in, bet in between, they want you to find out what the value of the variable is. In other words, they want to ask you what is j for in this in this in this example. What is j? What is j equal to? So remember, whenever there's an equal sign, they're asking you what does j or what does the variable equal to. In this case, j squared is over here, but we have but the, the root one and the root letter is actually j. So what do we do? Remember, always put the numbers on one side and the letters on the other. So 3j squared, I'm going to keep it. Why? Because I want to keep it on the left-hand side of the equation, of the equal sign. Okay, the next part is equals to. Now, how do I move this to the right? When I move this to the right, a negative sign it becomes a, very good, a positive sign. So it becomes minus 20 plus 1, 2, 8. Okay, the next part is what happens? We keep the 3j squared. Oops, 3y. 3j squared. And then equals to minus 20 plus 1, 2, 8 gives you what? What? Uh, it can also be rephrased or if you if you get yourself confused, it can also be rephrased as plus 1, 2, 8, which is 1, 2, 8, positive 1, 2, 8, minus 20. So what do you get? You get uh, 1, 0, 8. Okay, now 3j squared equals to 1, 0, 8. Now what do we do? Now again, we have to keep only the j squared. If you remember, the game is that. So let's take j squared first. This is 3 times j squared. So if 3 units of j squared is equal to 108, 1 unit of j squared is equal to 108 divided by 3. Very good. 108 divided by 3 will give me the answer of 36. So j squared is equal to 36. Finally, how do I find j? j, j squared, if you remember, the, the, the number squared, the little 2 on top there, actually means j times j okay so j times j equals 36 in other words they're asking you what times what gives you 36 if the numbers are the same so you put there j is equals to square root 36 in other words j is equals to 6 so j equals to 6 is that correct 6 times 6 36 we are right and that's how we do this question very simple once we know the, the, the what we're looking for which is we're looking for j that's it Alright, if you got all of this correct, I'm just going to give you a big high five because you are a math prodigy. Good job. Alright, I'm not going to move on to the second question here because I don't think I have, uh, I've gone too long for this video. But I am going to leave you with a quote of the week. And the quote of the week is, decide now to have no fear. Decide now to have no fear. Now, one thing that I notice about people who are uh, not so good in math is that there's a lot of fear in you. You are so scared of math. Don't be scared. Why are you scared? It's like anything else in your life. The more, if let's say you don't do something, the more you do something, the more you do it, actually, you become better at it. So don't be so scared to open that book and practice by yourself, right? Have no fear about it. If you have fear, guess what? It will block your mind from actually thinking. You don't understand how to do it. And then you, since you say you have, you are so afraid of it, it becomes a reality because you say, you know, you're afraid of it and then you don't study and then bam, you know, your results are bad. So don't go down that route. Decide now to have no fear at all, okay? And trust me, that will be a turning point in your math results. All right, with that, this is Coach Saifo signing off saying you are a math prodigy. Good job.